Hi, my name is Father Mike Manning. God bless you. Thank you very much for watching this program. I think you are in for something very special. You're going to experience some challenges in your life that maybe you hadn't anticipated. I'm going to be speaking with a very special lady, a friend of mine, Sister Gretchen. God bless you. Thank you very much for thanks, coming and being with us. Thanks for inviting me. Sister, you've, you've had an experience that is very rich and real throughout your life of trying to bring people to the experience of Christ and trying to make church, sure the church that we love very much as a Catholic church is a real representation of that Christ, Christian experience, of that Jesus experience. Are you with me on that? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Tell me a little bit about your experience of Jesus through your life. Have, have you uh, always been a, been a Catholic? Always been a Catholic. Had you ever... I was dunked early on. <laughs> have you ever gone through some times, though, in your, your reaching out to Christ where you found that perhaps ooh, things were difficult and maybe there might have been alternatives that you were thinking of? Well, I think... Um, the first, uh, first of all, I was very, very, very blessed with um, wonderful parents okay. and a wonderful family. Where were you raised? Um, I was born in Boston, mm -hmm. and then we moved out here when I was about um, five years old. Okay. So I really grew up in Southern California. So I, you know, particularly call this my home, sure. really. Yeah. So, um, but um, my father was uh, even at, at Vatican II. I remember my father reading all the documents of Vatican II. Hello? He was a farm at home. He, he was a pharmacist and he would sit on the couch at night and he would read the documents of Vatican II. Wow. And I I was so impressed with that because I had already entered the community. So I've been What do you mean entered the community? I entered the my my religious community. Oh, okay. So when I would, you know, visit he would tell me about what document he had just read and I hadn't even read them yet. Oh my gosh. So, um, so we're talking about a person who really understood what um, accepting the fact of discipleship and what it means to really be uh, a friend of Jesus and also an advocate for Jesus. And, uh, and I, that's one, one of the reasons why uh, I love that uh, encyclical or the apostolic exhortation of, uh, of Pope Francis on the joy of the gospel. Yeah. Yeah. And I think when you, when you mention the fact that um, people are leaving the Roman church, I think part of it is because they never experienced the joy of the gospel. Uh -huh. They might have experienced the rules of the church, but something was lacking in, in their uh, formation as a believer, as a Christian. And it's so easy to get caught up in the rules, isn't mm -hmm, it? Mm -hmm. And rules can become almost a security. They, if, if I'm following the rules and I'm almost scrupulous about them, Absolutely. that's going to get me to heaven. Absolutely. And yet that isn't necessarily the rule of Jesus. The Absolutely. rule of Jesus is not the law, but much more who are the people that that's are right. affected by the law. Are exactly, you with me on that? exactly. Yeah, yeah. And the other piece of it, too, is I think um, prayer is so important, but people learned how to say prayers. And when I do formation with adults, particularly with women, I say, you know, there's a difference between prayer and saying prayers. Both are good. Prayer is better. What's the difference? To and the, that. the difference is that we, in prayer, we are attentive to the movement of God and the Spirit in our life. We sit quietly, we and if we don't sit quietly, we're not going to hear the little whispers that God is constantly giving us. Wait a minute, are you saying that God talks to you? Sure. What do you mean, God oh, talks God to talks you? God talks to me Come right on. now through you. Oh. Through, through anyone I meet God, during that, the day. That makes me feel good, huh? <laughs> But you're saying that the, the, the bombardment of God's communication is all around us. Well, and see, if when we, teach, uh, uh, when we teach the laity how to pray, they become aware of that, and re they realize that they may, may never have met Jesus. And so when they meet Jesus, they become disciples, which is what we should have been doing all along. And that's one of the basic things that I think is the key for many, you're, you're saying this, of many people leaving the Catholic Church, um, I, I hear this often as to, I, well, why did you leave? Well, um, nobody ever talked to me about Jesus. And I'm saying, what? <laughs> you know, and throughout the catechism or through even 16 years of Catholic education, Station, through absolutely. grade school, high school, Absolutely. And college, absolutely. there could be so much concern about 
I guess, the organization and, and the rules, that you lost touch with a personal and intimate relationship with Jesus. Are you with and, me on this? And also, um, you fail to realize that one of the greatest gifts that we've been given as human beings is our conscience. And we need to follow our conscience. That's been church teaching for centuries. Yes. And yet many people, their conscience is telling them that this isn't quite right, but the rules say you have to do this. So they get confused. And when they see an evangelical, when they see a person who is, is so attentive to, the, to listening for the word of the Spirit, um, they, sort of, they sort of feel deprived. And so they begin to go to these churches and they see how happy everyone is and so forth. And, mm -hmm. uh, and so they soon discover that the happiness comes from their, from their personal relationship with Jesus. Actually, he came so that we would have life. That's the motto of my religious community. Jesus, he came that we might have life and life to the full. That's what my community is all about. And so um, I think that, that to me is, is a, uh, was an education that I received uh, in, in doing ecumenical work. Just right now I, I'm involved. What is ecumenical work? What ecumenical does work is, is to, to notice that the Christian community is so splintered that no longer can we say that, you know, um, when we think about Jesus just before he, before he died, he said that all may be one. Mm -hmm. And so ecumenism is the attempt to once again put Jesus at the center and to see that denominations became denominations for all kinds of reasons, but that one thing we have in common, and that is our baptism. We've literally been dunked in God. That's what we are. And a dear friend of mine, Barbara Bow, who taught at uh, Chicago Theological, she used to say that um, Christians are the walking wet. <laughs> the walking, the walking wet. wet. You That's just great. can't get the, the, rid of that. Get rid of that baptismal power. Yeah. And so spirit you know, life. it's really important that we that we somehow. Uh, you know, realize that that's so important. I just um, finished um, a book um, on the Ministry of Hospitality, and uh, it's been translated now into Spanish, so we're going to be, uh, the uh, Office of Worship, we're going to be doing that for different parishes to show them that hospitality, uh, you know, uh, the word hospitality comes from the word guest, welcome guest. And Jesus is asking people to come to his dinner and so we have to facilitate that. Yeah. We have to, yeah. you know, and like a smile is not a bad thing to have when you're at the door of the and church. The, the bottom line, I, the, the first question was, um, why everything seems to be falling apart with regard to especially, um, well, it's not only Hispanics, but European American people, uh, there's a move away from this. And, and I think you've highlighted some of the problems. And now a little bit of what's the solution being you, you touched one of the key, key things in my mind is a sense, of, a sense of hospitality, that if I walk into a Catholic church and all of a sudden I'm a stranger, <laughs> or if I'm not noticed, or if I'm not appreciated, I'm not going to come back next Sunday. Absolutely not. I'm not going to do that. Mm -hmm. But if there is a driving awareness that every person that walks in this church <laughs> is a person who needs to be felt that they're part of a family, not just the family of God, but the family of this mm -hmm, parish, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and that we nurture, nurture that. Oh, man, I think that this could change. That, that basic hospitality that you were talking about. I, when I was pastor, I uh, was reading all kind of things about, you know, what, what makes a good pastor? You know, how can you be a good pastor? Yeah. And, and there was something that I, I thought I never did it, but I wanted to put on, on the front of the church door three words. One was, uh, welcome. The other was listen, and the third was empower. <laughs> and just to say that, wouldn't that be marvelous if in the Catholic Church, as a solution to trying to <laughs> overcome this flood of people that are moving to the evangelical mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. to the non-denominational churches, you are welcome in this church, mm -hmm. and I'm going to listen to you. <laughs> I'm going to care what you have to say, and then third, yeah. I'm going to take the risk of letting you then pick up that dream and that, that yeah. call of the Spirit and let it happen in your church. How do you it's true. Yeah, yeah I, um, you know, if, if we look at Jesus in the Gospels, uh, there's the blueprint right there. You follow Jesus on an ordinary day. 
If you read Mark's Gospel, you'll be out of breath. Um, <laughs> because as you know, in Mark's Gospel, he, there are two big words he uses as and, 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 and then, and then, and, 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 and. So, I mean, by the time you get to the end of a chapter in Mark, you, you need a nap. I like you know? yes, So, so um, <laughs> if we watch him for a day, if we watch Jesus for a day, and watch who he hangs out with, and also watch how he hangs out, then you get the clues right there. You get the clues for discipleship. Who did he hang out with? The marginalized. Yeah. He hung out with people that nobody would hang out with. He hung out with women. He hung out with lepers. He hung out with children. He hung out with all kinds of folks, people who didn't fit into the rules of Judaism at that time. Samaritans and Gentiles. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. And so um, that's who we need to pay attention to now. I live, I live in an apartment complex that's called um, a... Um, senior arts colony. There are several of them around in the city, but uh, the street that it's on, there are a lot of homeless people. And the reason why there are homeless people there is because they've come because it's Hollywood. Mm -hmm. And they're mostly young, and they're mostly people who have come to be discovered so that they can become movie stars or musicians, and they would become very wealthy. And now they have no place to live. They're on the street. You literally have to walk past them to get to the market. And, and, and so you say there's Jesus there. Yeah. Nobody pays attention to them. Mm -hmm. um, um, I always carry stuff, I always carry stuff in my car. I always carry like those, you know, the, the bars, you know, that have sure. like uh, protein bars. Yeah. I always, always carry them so that if someone says I'm hungry, I assume that they're hungry. I assume they want food. I'm not gonna say, oh, he's probably going to take money and then he's going to go buy liquor. Right. You know, if he says he's hungry, uh, that's what I do. I get, and I've never, ever given them a protein bar where they don't say, ma'am, thank you so much. Mm -hmm. uh, they're people, yeah. you know, and, and Jesus is there. Amen. We know that because we've already seen him in his everyday life. We've seen how he acts. Yeah. We see who he talks to. We and see, as Francis says, they might smell bad, exactly. but maybe we should smell bad with them because we associate with them. That's right. We're going to come right back. Stay tuned. we got a message for you. We're going to come back. And you know what I want to talk about? I want to talk a little bit about how can we start to influence young people with regard to the flood of things that are happening on the media. Absolutely. But, um, Sister Gretchen, we've had the chance maybe to look at a, a serious problem in the Catholic Church today, not only in the United States, but in, in um, Europe. Australia, in many places where this is going on. And the call is to make sure that we don't allow ourselves to become so legalistic or so ritualistic that we lose touch with the real power of Jesus. One of the things that you do, though, as a teacher and as a writer, is that you're able to um, wrestle with young people today, not only the young people on the streets of Hollywood that you're caring mm -hmm. for, but young people that are walking around and you can see them on the, on the subways and on the buses holding on to their deal and, you know, and communicating with maybe the person in the aisle next to them <laughs> <laughs> rather than speaking out. Um, the whole world of television, the whole world through the Internet. What can we do um, to become a, a catalyst of perhaps alternatives or, or maybe a fresh direction that somehow that media can be a blessing rather than sometimes, as it is, a curse. Um, I think media literacy is absolutely uh, essential. And um, most people don't pay attention to that concept of media literacy. What do you mean by that? We need to know how the media works so that it won't work us over. Ooh. Oh. Very important, because if you look at the people now, they, they don't, they're not minding the media. The media is minding them, and they're not conscious uh -huh. of it. If you can't talk to another person across the table in a restaurant, uh, why did you go to the restaurant? Why not order take-in and both sit, sit beside one another and do your little thing, okay? Um, why waste the time and the, and the space when other people are waiting for a table where all you're doing is just sitting there and not even speaking for a, you know, a time? So I think minding the media is very important. One of the things I used to do uh, when I was working more clearly in media was I would give workshops uh, to parents, and it would be called How to Help Your Kids Mind the Media. Uh, and, um, and 
the point was that um, that you need to help them understand how each medium works. Um, so, for example, give, so, me, give me an so, example. So, um, how do, how does advertising work? How does mm. uh, how, do, how does um, music work? Um, do, you, do, do, uh, do you pay to get your, your song on, uh, on, the te on the top ten list? You know, how, how do you get there? How do you get there? How, do, how is the industry working? How does movie industry working? Look at, look at the whole thing recently about how uh, hacking into a particular studio. Um, you know, um, Sony, the Sony experience. The Sony yes. experience, you yeah, know, yeah. and, and um, uh, it's about money. We need to know that the children need to know it's about money, and um, uh, it's very fascinating to me. Um, one of my um, uh, one of my nephews, one of my nieces actually, and her her uh, boy. He's now going into college, but when he was little, uh, he for Christmas he would have to choose one of the toys he got for Christmas. One of the ones he liked, not the ones he didn't like, but the ones he liked and give it to a poor child. Whoa! From the time he was little. And so then from the time he was in eighth grade, he began to work in a soup kitchen. Wow. So you have, to, you have to show them alternatives to sitting in front of the television set. You have to show them alternatives to buying. We just came through a, the, the season of greed, I always say. It's not really Advent, true, it's true. the season of greed. Uh, and um, and so it's important that we that we do media literacy with, well, from a very early age. Sister uh, Rose Picotti and I co-authored uh, several books on media literacy. The first one was called Media Mindfulness, and um, it was for youth ministers uh, to teach high school kids. So it was actually for youth ministers and for Catholic high school teachers. And then the, they asked us if we would do one for K through eight. Mm. And we did one on K through eight. And each grade studied a particular aspect of media. So the kindergarten kids, uh, actually, um, they learned about music. Mm -hmm. So that you get them ready to understand how music plays a part in an ad. If it's happy music, you're, you're going to buy it, you know? So, my, my, so my. a kindergarten kid is perfectly capable of finding that. And they had patron saints. So the patron saint for kindergarten was St. Cecilia, who was the patron of music. So they realized that the church is not against media. The church has always said media is good. Every, every one of God's gifts is good. So it's important that we teach that so that we're not anti-media, as many, many groups are very anti-media, and they, some of them are actually Catholic. And part of it is because they're not media literate. Uh, and I think the media is an important part of evangelization, just as you do. That's what, sort of what you do as part of your ministry. Mm -hmm. um, we can't not look at it, but we also have to realize that, that we need to learn uh, how it works. And, and what you're saying to me, and I, I, I really appreciate this, this is, this is very profound, um, that as we sit and we're watching a, a television program and then hopefully being able to run through the commercials, to understand the whole financial world of this whole thing and, and acknowledge that mm -hmm. uh, in our world of Jesus, who was very loving for the poor and very much, we can be seduced <laughs> in the music world, mm -hmm. in the mm -hmm. television world, in the internet world, or the, the, you know, whether you're Android or IP or, or uh, iPhone. Money is billions and billions of dollars, and we're partaking of that and we're and looking the, for the and, next thing we're looking the for the thing, lesson and, and, we're and hungry i can for hardly that. wait to get the iWatch. watch yeah, yeah, it'll yeah, be yeah. coming out soon yeah, yeah. now what's going to happen how much does an ipad cost ipod costs you know uh, the iphone yeah. we're talking hundreds of dollars oh, yeah, yes, and yet yes, you yes. see kids in the inner city with them you know yes, yes, yes. um somehow our values can get skewed if we're not pointed in the run direction i remember in the gospel if you remember jesus said um, the, the, these people, they look and look, but they don't see. Yes. They listen and listen, but they don't understand. Oh, and that's what you're talking about. There you it? have yes. it right yeah, there. there. Um, I think it's, in, I, I, I say that too often, I think it's important, but I think it is. I think youth groups, um, they're perfect for that. I, I went to the confirmation of one of my grandnieces, 
and the kids were, were playing with their iPhones during their confirmation ceremony. Yeah, of course. I'm going, hello? Yeah, yeah. Missing uh, the boat. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. This, this, this is the tool and the bigger picture. They're not seeing the bigger picture. That, that's maybe the, the thing that you're really saying. And, and I'm thinking of that with regard even to the world of sports. Uh, I love I love football. Mm. I, I love basketball. I love baseball, uh, and I, I love it. And yet, sometimes, I think that we overlook the salaries and we overlook the financial real. I, I have a I have a relative that says, "Gosh, if those guys love to play play baseball so much, why don't they do it for free?" You know, and that's totally totally out of the ballpark, and yet that's going to Ireland. <laughs> the national sport is a football sport yeah. where in which the people of the town get together and they play and they have big national things. Mm -hmm. They don't get paid. That's right. They that's love right. the sport. That's right. That's Wouldn't right. that be, ooh, what, what a well, look fascinating at, look at even world. <laughs> look at even collegiate sports, you know. Yeah. Um, I just read somewhere where uh, now they're, they're pushing for, uh, for coaches to get more money if they were they are able to convince the kids to actually go to class wow which is <laughs> now, the basic thing of the whole deal <laughs> Why and you go to look school? at them now what do they do they drop out when they're juniors or seniors why because there's the money bucks. wouldn't it be wonderful if we were able to just see that money can be a value but money can be a value in so far as we know how to share it with people we're going to come right back okay and you know what we're going to do we're going to pray with some of the things that you're concerned about. You've been writing and you've been That's calling great. to us. Stay tuned and we want to pray with some of your concerns. That's thank great. you. I thank you very much for coming and being with us and it's always good to be able to mm. share some topics that mm -hmm. I think are important. What's going on with the church? <clears throat> How can we make the Catholic Church more accessible to many people? How can we deal with making sure that young people are not so addicted to the, to the, uh, mm -hmm. the means of communication that they, they fail to see the bigger picture, the bigger picture of finances and advertising and, and, right. and, yeah. and being aware of that in order to have a better balance. But one of the joys is we, we ask people to call in and uh, well, to help support the ministry, mm -hmm. but also to share their prayer intentions. But listen, listen to these and pray with us, if you will. This is um, Sheila from Illinois. Um, my daughter was in an accident. She needs serious help. Grace from California. Help me to keep my eyes on the Lord. <laughs> no. um, Dorothy from Mississippi. I'm paralyzed from a stroke. Lord, help me to get better. Mm. No. And here's Sylvia from New York. Uh, she's in a nursing home, and um, or she's needing a, a nursing home desperately from that. Let's pray. Let's pray. Lord, we believe that you're a God not just up in the mountains or, or off away up in the clouds, but a God who walks with us and lives with us. And not just lives with us and walks with us, but vitally concerned about helping and bringing healing and even miracles into our life. Would you do that right now with these people that have prayed and with everyone that's watching? Bring your life, bring your miracle, and may Jesus' love for you always make you smile. <laughs>